I knew I was going to forget that. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> I was trying to do something new and show some comments as the video was playing, and I forgot to take that screen off before I went into the comments. But hi. Hi, hi, hi. Welcome, hi. everyone. <laughs> welcome, everyone. Um, welcome to Tuesday Night Knit Chat. Um, yeah, I hope everybody can see us and hear us. Um, we are a mostly knitting podcast coming to you from southwestern Ontario. Canada should say that Canada. Uh, my name's Noel, and I'm Kelly, and we are Knits and Pieces, the podcast. <laughs> we don't say that too often either, but no, we don't. This is kind of no. like a little bit of an offshoot from the actual Knits and Pieces. We started out with uh, doing just a regular podcast, but now we found that it it's nice to have everybody join in. It's nice for us to have interaction, and yeah, we just have fun interacting with everyone on Tuesdays. So. Welcome to everybody. For those of you that are here week after week, we look forward to this all week and we're happy to have any new people join us. And yeah, even if you're not talking to us, there's a really active chat group going on in here. Kelly, you said you were in here earlier and you thought someone was in here at 10 to 12 this afternoon was the wow. first moment that I saw. So somebody wow, was really wow. getting excited. Um, I mean, they weren't in here having a conversation. They just popped no, in and they put a comment no. and they say, looking forward to tonight. So that's um, that sort of boosts our spirits too. It means at least, you know, those people are going to show up. So yeah, that's good. That's but, right. That's yeah. right. And we're so happy that that so many people have met other people in through here and you're discussing your projects and reading through the projects. I think my list gets so much longer of things that I want to make. And all That's I need more of is time. <laughs> speaking of long lists, my list for vests grew exponentially oh, yeah. after, after going in to do the winner today for that. Um, yep. I mean, I've been kind of looking at it all along, but Okay, there's at least six in there that like jump straight from there into I want to cast those on next week. And I don't know. Will I? Won't I? Who the heck knows? But I want them. I definitely want them. Yeah. So yes, yeah. Julia, gone are the days when there were 20 or 30 of us. There's uh, there's a few more of us in here now. Uh, generally, I think we average somewhere around the 600 mark in here. And we like to think that you are all our nearest and dearest and closest That's and best right. friends. We need to rent so. a real coffee house that holds that many people. I know. We <laughs> often say that on Saturdays when we're knitting with our friends, we think, you know, and we're so loud, you know, sometimes we're, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 people around that table. That would be like a big day when we're all there. Yeah. And we're pretty loud. And I think, can you can you just imagine what 600 people in the same room would sound like all talking about knitting and having the biggest show and tell ever. And it's the inspiration. My goodness, that would be, I, I know. be better than any drug out there. I swear. That's right. That's right. So, but anyway, we're, we're glad that you're all here and yeah. So we're going to talk about knitting. Well, and life. <laughs> A little bit yeah, about life. A little bit about life, yes. So we hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. Um, April, I can't believe we're in April. Like, it's crazy. I know. So, yeah, yeah. Wasn't it New Year's it. Eve yesterday? Like, I, I mean, seriously. Like, like last Christmas, I can't, I cannot believe that it's, that it's April already. But, so I don't know if anybody got fooled or pranked on um, April Fool's Day. But I did not. Did you get pranked? I did not, but one of my little grandchildren did. So I'm going to show that. So okay, good. Rachel, um, Rachel, my daughter-in-law, and my son Curtis went to Rachel's sister's house for dinner yesterday. So her sister had made these little um, this dessert and gave them to the kids. Well, Anne said Rachel said she was a little leery and she didn't take one. But here's the picture. She made she made cake pops, but inside is a Brussels sprout. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so Isla was not impressed. <laughs> no, no, she doesn't look impressed at all, at all. But I thought that was I thought that was a great a great prank. I well, would have never really, thought of it. It's a really healthy cake pop, you know. 
<laughs> I thought that was if she could have choked it funny. down, you know, that would be great for her. Yeah. Well, I think she ate the chocolate off the outside. <laughs> there was chocolate. Of course. It, so of course. She, uh, yeah. So anyway, so I thought that was that was cool. I might remember that for some time, but my family will all know it now, so I can't do it here. <laughs> well, you have to just do like one or two, right? And you make the rest of them are all good. So everybody's enjoying theirs and only one or two people get the like Brussels sprout cake pop. Yeah. Yeah. It's like those... I, I don't know if it was cooked or not. It looks like from the picture, I think it wasn't because it would hold the, like being firm, it would hold the chocolate a lot more. But anyway, I'll have to find out. But I like Brussels sprouts and I like chocolate. I'm not so sure I'd like them together. <laughs> so... If they were cooked, if they were cooked. Yeah. Yeah, for I sure. Know. I don't know. Anyway, anyway. So I thought, I thought that was kind of a, kind of a cute, like. Very cute. Cool. Very yes. cute. Yeah. Yes. So, okay. So. Barbara got a new roof on her quilt studio yesterday. So that's not a prank. That's a really no, good that's thing. that's a good thing. That's, that's a, good a really thing. good thing. I was just yeah. trying to go back and see if anybody else got pranked. Um, no, I but I was, anything. I was, when I was in taking a quick look through some of the comments, um, Fiona is here from Scotland. So she's, it's late for her, but she's here from Scotland. And she said she just did her first steep today. Oh, wow. But she was a little worried that it wasn't going to hold. And I saw she got some comments from some of the group saying that if she's reinforced it, mm -hmm. it should be fine. Like if you've done a crochet around it, if you've sewn it, um, Fiona, it should be fine because your knitting does not want to unravel sideways. It wants to unravel in the direction of the rows. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. once you've picked up those stitches around it to put your arm in or to put, or if you're sewing the arm in, that should give it enough stability to hold it. Like it should be, it should be fine. So, but, but congratulations to you for doing your first steak. I know the first time you do it, it's a little scary. Yes. Just like the first time you cut for an afterthought heel, it's a little scary cutting that stitch. It is. You yeah. think as soon as you make that tiny little incision in your knitwear, you think it's just going to go okay. and right the off. stitches are just going to fly. Yeah. You have to work pretty hard actually to pick a heel out for an afterthought heel. That's so. right. That's right. So, yeah. and I also want to say hi to Lori Ann. She said she finally made a live. So welcome Lori Ann to the live and yeah, we're happy to have you. So it's always nice. If we know, unfortunately, we're not in a time zone that everybody can participate in the live. Um, but well, we're glad, we certainly are glad that we get the amount of people that we do get. So. Yes, absolutely. And if this is your first time here uh, if, and you're near a keyboard, so mm -hmm. uh, I know what a lot of people do, and I do this when I watch podcasts as well, is I actually watch something on my TV and then I have my iPad or a mobile device beside me. And that's what I'm uh, putting some comments in with. So if you have a keyboard, uh, you are welcome to join in the chat. It is a very friendly group. Do not be shy. Just jump in the water's fine and uh have a great time yeah we have kona coffees here from hawaii oh my goodness i know Welcome. hi i love kona coffee we had the best kona coffee in hawaii but hope to get back there someday but okay so did you have any questions this week kelly i did i did okay. did you have any yep okay go ahead um, oh well mine's a little bit of a show and tell here well, so and I meant to trim something up, but I didn't get it done. So Donna was asking if uh, we could show or talk about how we actually knit on two 16 inch circular needles. Okay. So okay. I, um, for a sock, I normally knit on a nine inch circular, but uh, I just finished a sock for my husband. And this was a good uh, reason for me to get that second one cast on so that I could show Donna. And I popped this one onto two 16 inch circulars so the thing about knitting a sock on two is basically you're just splitting your stitches in half so um i wish i didn't have these strings to show but anyway i think it will work so you basically just separate onto two so you've got half of your stitches are on one 16 inch and then on the back half the other 16 inch and all that you do this is really really easy I think people get confused about this because they think, oh, I don't know which needle to knit with, but you're only ever knitting with one needle at a time. That's what you have to keep in mind. So when you're ready to knit, so this would be the row that I'm knitting. Here's my working yarn ready to stitch. All that you do is you ignore the stitches on the back. You're just gonna work on your front stitches. Slide that needle back through into your sock, and then you bring up the very same 
needle. I know this looks confusing. It's not. It's Grab not. the same needle. And then that is what you are working across knitting your stitches with. When you get to that end of that row, you're going to pull it back through so that it's just sitting on the cord. This is the only tricky part about knitting with the two sixteens is pulling the wrong needle. And then you're going to turn your work around and you do exactly the same thing. You're going to orient that needle that you're going to work with, slide that one back into your working stitches, pick up the other end of the same needle, and then just knit across. It is literally, um, this is this was my preferred method before Natalie got me onto the nine inch circulars. That I will is admit. still my preferred method. Yes, I was I, never a huge method. fan of the magic loop. It, it just always seemed like I was adjusting. So I got pretty quick using the two 16 inches. And having said that, when I knit with my nine inch circular, I still have to always, I always have these two needles keeping them in my sock bag because I know I'm always going to have to go to them when I do the toe. You yep. can't bind off the toe with that nine right. inch circular. The stitch is going to get too tight. So I always have to slide them onto my two 16 inch needles. And these are just my two preferred ones. You will find what works for you. But uh, honestly, trust me, it's very easy. The reason that I moved from the 16 inch to the nine inch circular was when I was working on some color work socks. What some people find, and I did find it a little bit, if I was working on two 16 inches um, doing color work, I found that I got a little bit of a laddering going up uh, between the two needles. So that's where I switched to the small circumference circular, and I find that that really helped me out. But this was kind of fun to knit this it on is, two 16. Like that. And, and it's pretty it's quick. It is. And the thing, like the thing, when I first started doing it, I was doing it wrong. I was actually, I would end up with all the stitches on one needle. The thing that you need to remember is the stitches that are on each needle never move off that needle. They always, never. those half the stitches stay on one needle and half the stitches stay on the other needle. So yeah. I, and sometimes you might, and I, I do it periodically. Sometimes I knit with the wrong end and I end up with all of them on one the next row, you just knit the other half back onto the other needle because it's really hard on that tight circumference. There's not enough room to kind of do another, you won't be able to do another row like that, but you can easily knit it back onto the other needle. Right, right. So, but yeah, so. It's, 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 it's worth trying if you don't like, like I use nine inch for color work because I think, um, and I think the reason that you get the kind of uh ladder at the sides is because when you're carrying your work around it's a lot easier and more even to do it when you're on the same cord when you're moving from cord to cord and you're you know you're knitting with one yarn before you carry the other one over it's a lot harder to keep that the same well, tension as what your others are yes and also when you're carrying it to the next needle um the cord is a smaller a diameter right. than the needle so as soon as you drop that off of your needle and you slide that onto a cord and then you're tensioning and giving that yeah. little tug when you start on the next side, you're now tensioning that last stitch to the circumference of the cord instead of the circumference of the needle, right? So this is why it's important to um, try to not over tighten when you pull that through to the, your other side. But uh, as I said, it was kind of fun. And um, Karen, Karen, yes, Karen had a had a comment, and I've seen this before, and this is also a really good tip. If you can find two needles that have different color cords, mm -hmm. that will sort of no, keep yeah. you in mind which one that you're pulling up. I've done this for so long that this is what I'm used to now, and this is just my kind of go-to little set of needles that I keep in there, but yeah. uh, that would certainly work as well. So, okay, that's what I had. Okay, so one of the questions that I had was whether we had worked with tides. We talk about a lot of um, a lot of the whole yarns. We've used Coast, we've used Super Soft. I have used tides in three sweaters, and I love it every bit as much as I love the Super Soft and mm -hmm. the Coast. It does have a really nice look because the tides is seventy percent wool and thirty percent silk. So you kind and it's like more like a grainy silk. So you kind of get that tweedy look in the fabric. Um, I've used it both. I don't think I've used it. I haven't used it just singly, but I've used it double, like two strands of tides made an absolutely wonderful fabric for one of the big love jackets. I think that's by Ankastrick. Yes. But yeah. what I did find with, and with some of the others too, like I found with the tides, once I had done that because it was worked double and it's a big cardigan, 
once I had soaked it, I actually put it in a bag and put it in the spin cycle of the washer. And I did find that shrank it a little bit. So I found if I just took it, rolled it up in towels and kind of stepped on it to get water out, then it was fine. The only pro the only time I've had problem with any of the whole yarns kind of shrinking in a bit is when I put it in my washing machine and put it on the spin cycle. So I don't know if it's from the agitation of it, but that leads to another question that I did have. And someone had asked whether I found that the, whether the coast shrinks or not. So I have yeah. not put any of my coast into anything like that. I just roll it up and lay it out and it's been fine. So, and I have knit it single, double, I don't know if I've knit the coast held with anything yet, but you have like held with like a titty cock or a, a mohair. Yes. And I've not found, I've not fa had any problems with it as far as shrinking. No, no, I haven't either. So, and um, I've washed my sweater several times and mm -hmm. it's exactly where it used to be. Uh, I've never used it by itself and, mm -hmm. but you have. And yep. I've so, done several sweaters with yeah. it by itself and it's been fine. And I've done a sweater with the coast itself held double and it was fine when I blocked it. So I have a cone of the tides that I bought because I like the project that you had made so much and I just haven't got to the sweater yet, but I definitely, I love the way it feels. It mm -hmm. really is nice. Um, so. Okay. We have to go back to the sock needles. There's okay. a couple of more questions. Okay. Somebody asked firstly um, what brand of sock needles these are. This is a brand that I really like. This is a very inexpensive pair. It is the Knitter's Pride Nova Platina. So they are um, metal tips. But for me, I don't like a sock tip that's too sharp because I put holes in my finger. So these are just the right amount of sharp for me. Uh, I know that Noelle really likes a sharper point. Minor she doesn't on, use minor her finger the, to push. So she's always on top of chai goose. But I like the fixed ones better than... Mm -hmm. I like the fixed ones better because that the little, I, I mean, I like the little set when you're doing sleeves or something. Yes. But the, the cord on it is so fine. I prefer the cord with a little bit more stability. Yes. So I like the two fixed 16 inch as opposed to interchangeable. Mm -hmm. And I know that you also can get, um, wow, what are the ones? What are the wooden ones? The Nika? the Licka? Oh, Licka, 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 Higa. Yeah, Licka. The Licka, the Licka ones also do come, but I, I, and I have used them and I take them if I'm going on a plane, but I find I break wood needles so easily that, especially when you get into a 2.25 millimeter because they're so thin. Yes. I just find I break them too easily. So I like the way they feel, but I have had them split on I like the way they feel, well. but yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And someone also asked if I do my, my heels using my nine inch circular. And I do, if I'm doing a, uh, shadow wrap or an afterthought heel then I use my nine inch circular and I like I like using that I, I don't have to deviate from that at all um, if you're doing a heel or sorry did I say that wrong now we've yeah, got I don't thinking. think you can I don't think you can no I can't do an afterthought heel on a nine inch no. circular okay no. sorry let's just rewind that <laughs> I do um, a shadow wrap heel or uh, heel flap and gusset using my yeah. nine inch circular. Um, if I'm doing an afterthought heel, that is also where I have to go to no, the two because you go anything that you're going in a circle and you get smaller, you can't. Yes, do the, you have to. Yeah, you inch. have to go back. So, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah. So, <laughs> okay. Um, let's see what else we had here. Oh yeah, last week I had talked a little bit about the alternating cable bind off. And I think there was a couple of tutorials that I had linked. One was by Cheryl Toy. I'm happy to say I've had, had comments from people that they've used it and they loved it. And I'll show you one of my finished objects today. I used it on that. And I, yeah, I, I love it. So, and it's, it takes a little bit of getting used to because it's a little bit different because you're not bringing your yarn when you're binding off, you're not bringing your yarn the normal way that you carry it, like around the front front of the needle, like you like you know around your needle tip. You're bringing it around the back of the needle, which sometimes you really have to think about because it's it's against your muscle memory to do that. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I will link it again this week in case anybody wants to give it a try. Um, Kelly, I showed you the swatch that I had and what it looked like. It looks great. It looks like it like I don't think you would know that it wasn't. No. It looks exactly um, like the cast on. It's a perfect out. match. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Do you have any other questions? Just this one from the comments, Mark. Uh, okay. 
Marnie was asking, how do we get to the English language on the Holst site? Marnie, up at the top, I believe it's on the right-hand side. Yes, on the right-hand yes. side, there's a little symbol up there. And if you click on that, there'll be a little drop-down menu and you can switch it over to English, English and yeah. then you'll be good to go. It is a little trickier to do. I have on occasion, I've had a hard time if I'm using my phone to get it to switch to a different language. So I don't know, that could be where you're trying to search it from, but on a desktop or on a mobile device, like a laptop or a, sorry, um, a tablet, it's very easy. Yeah. Just drop, yeah, I find drop on my menu. tablet, there's no, no problem with switching over. You can also switch your currency too, depending where you are in the world. Yes. There's yes. a couple of different choices of currency as well. So, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So one other thing that we should probably mention because we kind of forgot last week <laughs> is about the last year and the year before Kelly and I have talked about going to the MIDI meetup in Chicago that was originally put on by Frivolous and Frugal podcast and Three Ply podcast. So um, they are not doing it this year, but Penny from PJ Knits podcast has graciously taken it over and put it together and it is going to go ahead again this year as in previous years so the weekend for that is is or the two days of the meetup which is the friday and the saturday is the 26th and the 27th of july and it will be held at the same place at the hilton garden inn in, in garden inn in hoffman estates hoffman estates and i will i will put the link to penny's group so that you can go in and you can find out all the information that you need to know about it. Um, we are going to go again and yeah. very excited to go back and, and just, and it's, it's very low key. It's basically just a whole, a whole weekend of just knitting and meeting other like-minded people. And they're calling it a makers meetup this year. So it's not just knitting. If you want to crochet, if you want to cross stitch, if you want to bring your spinning wheel, like anything that you want to do, it's all welcome and it's um it's a wonderfully welcome group and yeah we we i'm so glad that it's happened again thank you so much penny and penny's doing it in conjunction with her friend kendra who we have met both years that we have gone yes. and so thank you very much to them for putting it on because i know it's a lot of work to put on something and, it and get all the logistics set in place and yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to it again. And again, I will post the information. So if there's anybody that's interested, you can go and you can find out all about it. So yes, yeah, we are really looking forward to it. I yeah. thought that it was going to clash with some other travel plans that I had. And then it turns out that my other travel plans had been given a wrong date to me. So when the date got corrected, my weekend opened up again. So I'm able to go and I am so excited because I'm telling you when I found out I wasn't going to be able to go, and Noelle was going to go, I was having some serious FOMO thinking, oh, all my friends that I've made in the past two years, I won't get to see them. And that's, um, that would be sad. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't like that. Yeah. I would feel really bad. So yeah. anyway, uh, we cannot wait to go. Cannot wait. Yeah. And it is, it truly is like, there's, there's not a schedule. There's not anything that you have to be at. Like if you want, and you know, they have a wonderful big, um, conference room that people can get together in and yeah it's it's just a very enjoyable weekend yes so. and there's room in the lobby too um yep. the price of the hotel is extremely reasonable it includes a hot breakfast i don't know if you said that sorry i was reading no, comments I didn't. I didn't. and there are a couple of yarn stores if you should be so inspired uh, mm -hmm. that you could go to in the local area and uh, it's also if you're flying in it's very close to the o'hare airport it's not that far of a drive at all and i know that there were a few people that flew in last year and uh, anyway it's just a wonderful time it's a wonderful weekend it is like the best of the best if you could just literally take a weekend and do nothing but just hang out with your friends yep as Penny said, in whatever state of dress you like, you could wear your pajamas down to the room to knit in. If you wanted to, I mean, please put clothes on. That might be that could be a problem <laughs> if you showed up without your clothes. But anyway, uh, you could sit around in your PJs. And honestly, it's just the best time. There's no schedule. There's no commitment. If you feel like taking a break, your room is just there in the same hotel. It's a very um, it's just the best. It is the best. Yeah. 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 So. OK. So. <laughs> We're almost half an hour in here. We haven't got to the knitting yet. <laughs> well, you okay, know, there's so, a lot of things to talk about. Um, how about we move on to what we're wearing? Okay. 
Okay. Because we still have some admin. We have some prizes. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, okay. Let's do the admin. I forgot about that. (laughs) Okay. I'll get the banners you talk. Okay. So we had a couple of make alongs that were coming to an end. And uh, well, only one that was coming to an end. Sorry, I misspoke. But then there's one that we come to an end every month on and then we start again. So we'll start with that one. Uh, That is our year long sock along. And uh, it's very easy to enter. You basically finish some socks and pop it into the thread. And we draw for two prizes at the end of each month. And uh, we will draw all the way back to January. So at this point in time, to the end of March, there were 995 pairs already knit in there. Can you believe that? That is so many. And that doesn't include ours. And that doesn't include ours. And we've been on a sock train lately too. (laughs) So that doesn't even include ours. We would definitely be over a thousand, well Mm -hmm. over a thousand. So I I don't know about that. We would. Oh, we were maybe, only five, five pairs short. Yeah, oh, we five. Okay, okay. Oh, I didn't. No, nine hundred and ninety-five. Oh, okay. I yeah, so we're definitely over a thousand with okay. ours. Yes. And uh, anyway, so our first draw is for a pattern, and this pattern is generously donated by our friend Natalie Sheldon, who is Remembrance's Pottery, but also a fantastic pattern designer, and uh, she designs a lot of color work socks and some color work sweaters. And uh, basically you can do the pattern of your choosing from her store. And we really appreciate Natalie's support of this podcast. So the first winner is um, Klaska. Klaska. Yes, Klaska, who we all know well. Anybody in here knows Klaska. And I love these socks. They They are, are do they look familiar, Noel? Because it's a broken rib socks, which I believe would be really similar to your Friday slipover that you made. And so the winning number uh, that the random generator chose was 671. And I just think they look like the coziest socks ever. Yeah, they are. They're gorgeous. Really nice. nice. Okay. And then the second prize is always a sock yarn. And this month's sock yarn is very spring, very bright, and generously donated by our very good friends at Full Moon Fibers. And look at this, friends. It is absolutely stunning. This is called Vanilla Dip. And uh, excuse me, it is on their Nebula Eclipse sock set, which is 80% uh, merino and 20% nylon. This is a full 100 gram skein. And then there are two 20 gram minis. minis. Look at the colors. Just look gorgeous. at the gorgeous colors. Know, it's like there. that vanilla dip donut with all the sprinkles on top. <laughs> is that okay? I was thinking <laughs> that it was it ice cream, but I think you're exactly right. You're yeah. exactly right. Yeah, I went to ice cream, you went to donuts. Yeah. And I mean, you could definitely get two pairs of socks out of this yeah. for sure. Absolutely so. for sure. Okay. And the winner of our sock yarn is Cracker Jack. Um, Cracker Jack. <laughs> yes. She didn't have a name on Ravelry. And so she is Cracker Jack. And it was number 948. So the wow, generator so chose close late. Yeah. But yeah. if you look closely at her socks, I know I think we've both made those. Those are the heel toe do si do socks. Oh, yeah. I've made and I really like times. Yes, yes. Really so. pretty socks too. So congratulations. Um all right. I will we'll go to the other okay. giveaway we'll do, and, then and then we'll show yeah how to get in touch with us. Okay. Yep. So then uh the other thing that we had come to an end was our make along for and I'll let you talk about this one. Okay. So it was our our give sleeves a rest and make a vest. <laughs> Yes. So, so yeah. So it was amazing how many vests or slipovers got finished. Like I know, I did. I think I did two, and and I've got another one that's almost done. Like, and I hadn't knit that many vests before, but they are great, especially even for like this time of year when you know you still kind of want a little bit of a layer, but you don't necessarily want a whole sweater, and they're just so versatile. They are. So, and you know, you can even wear them into summer. I mean, I may not wear this one into summer with the mohair, but you could definitely, well, maybe I would, who knows. But I was wondering today, I think this one particularly would look really cute just with a white uh, short sleeve t-shirt. I think yeah, it would look really yeah, cute. I like, yeah. I kind of like that look. And yeah. then some of the others that we've done um, that don't have mohair, I think you could wear them just as a summer shell. And yeah, uh, yeah. only as long as your armhole, like your armhole thing isn't too deep. Yeah. So as long as your arm this sounds pretty good. Up. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. So, or, I mean, you could wear it like a sports bra under it if you wanted to do that. <laughs> Ever. 
<laughs> anyway, so we were glad to see so many entries and um, how many were, I didn't look, how many were there all together? I don't know. Okay. The there were uh, 224 entries. And That's I have awesome. to say, I have to say this because I did take the time to go through of the 224, 47 vests were the riptide pattern. Yay. Yay. Well, that is a great <laughs> pattern. Can't wait till it the, the V-neck one comes out. Yes. Yes. So. Um, I'm definitely going to have another one of those in my future for sure. And uh, so we were really happy to, um, to do that. Yeah. Yes. So you've got the prize there, Kelly. I have the prize. Yes, I do. So we, I was thinking that with um, spring coming and maybe I'm just super excited to be knitting outside. I hope everybody is excited to be knitting outside. We had a few little teaser days. And then of course, when I was in BC, it was 22 degrees. So that was like a week of knitting outside. And I just got the knitting bug. I like to have a really nice bag when I go knitting outside. I want to make sure that my yarn is protected. I want to be able to carry my water bottle. I might need some snacks. And then of course, there might be yarn that I want to show off to my friends that I've bought that week. So I need a good bag to knit outside with. And Sandy makes just such a bag. So this is an absolutely gorgeous, big bag uh, made by our friend Sandy. Yeah, that's And monogram with knits and pieces mm -hmm. and it's a really really generous size it also has a nice vinyl bottom and that is important because when we knit outside and I want to put the bag down I want to know that's protected too and it has a zipper pocket inside and as well this is a pocket on the outside, the outside yeah. really lovely bag and yeah. I thought look at this little sheep knitting I just love the yeah. pattern that she's got yeah. going here so thank you so much Sandy for uh, supporting our podcast with your sewing and okay okay random number so generator chose the winner is barb oh is that this will do this will do is her it's a second i haven't we have to bring it up there we i did <laughs> why isn't it up there is it not i can see it i can't see it Okay, if you say it's there, I believe you. It's not there on my screen, but anyway, okay. Okay. There we well, go. Now it's there. It, it's there now? It's there now. That is the okay. strangest thing. Anyway. I don't know. That is the strangest thing. Anyways, congratulations, um, Barb. And she is this will do on Ravelry. And I'm not sure. Is it a is it a uh Friday it is. Slip -over? It is. It's the Friday oh, the slip -over, over the V. Yes. Yes. That was also um a pretty high contender in the vest make along as well. Yes. There were a few and of that, those. That one does come in a V-neck version and a crew neck version. Yes. And the so, V-neck is definitely on my list to make. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very so, nice. Yeah. It's gorgeous. And I mean, a nice gray vest, you could wear that with everything. Like a great staple wardrobe piece. Yeah. I also noticed, um, I'm wondering if uh, I'm getting a weird little Wi-Fi signal. That could be my issue. Oh, with the okay. rain, sometimes we have, anyway, what I wanted to say is when I was doing the draw today, Barb mentioned when she put her project in, this was her first time entering a knit along. So congratulations, oh. pretty good odds so far, Barb. Yep. Okay, so for all of our winners, um, you can contact us at knitsandpiecespodcast at gmail.com. For anybody that's won a physical prize that we have to send out, we need your full name your mailing address and then yes. for the um the pattern if you just email me i will give you the code to use on ravelry to pick out your pattern mm -hmm. so congratulations to all of our winners um did you pick out did you pick out one for the first quarter of the chatter for no i forgot oh well we'll do that okay next now week. i have a we'll job for next, next week. week yes i do yeah. i okay. was thinking when i was in there today my goodness i feel like there's still something i need to be doing um Okay, but while we're on that topic, let's just pull this up because I did update this today and okay. I thought, oh, look at me, clever, getting this work done. <laughs> okay. so, this is a slide of all of the make-alongs that we have going on for the year. So we've already talked about the sock make-along, that hasn't changed. And then the advent along that I forgot to do the draw for today. So sorry, friends, I will do that for next week. Um, so the advent along is to take the December pressure off and it's to choose a project that is... Uh, determined to be for December. It could be something that you're gifting away. It could be something for yourself. And you work, you divide that into 12 equal parts and do a little bit of work on it each month so that you have the project finished in December. And uh, 
we were going to draw one prize for each quarter from the chatter thread and we will enter the FO thread or sorry, open the FO thread in December. So I will draw that this week and we will let you know who the lucky winner is so far from the yep. chatter. Yep. And then we have a new one. Do you want to hit, take that? Sure. Um, so actually, I, when I was thinking about it today, I thought we could even call it the, our spring cleaning I like that. Now. I like that. Yes. <laughs> because we're into spring and we want you to go through and use some of that stuff in your stash because then you can make room for more acquisitions <laughs> coming in. That's so, right. So from now, April 1st until June 30th, it is going to be our smash that stash again. And um, you need to use at least 50 grams of stash yarn. Stash yarn in this case will be yarn that was in your stash on or before should we say the beginning of the year i opened the thread today and i only said april okay so. fine okay so we'll do it from april 1st then yes and what about whips i was going to ask you that question and let you i make think the we should allow them because we want you to use up your yarn and then and you and then you've still got to finish the project right so yes whips, yes so we will allow whips and yeah so so i know that this was popular before um yeah. So like I said, it's, it's spring cleaning. So get in there and look at those yarns that you've got in there that need to be made into something. And now you've got a purpose for doing it and you can get it into the knit along. So, yes. And we were supposed to announce what the give along or sorry, what the make along was going to be last week. And, and we, we didn't. <laughs> so we felt this was fair because you don't need to, we wanted you to have time to buy some yarn if you needed it, but this way you can't buy no, yarn for this right. one. That's right. So this was and the if you already most started fair a project, that we If you already started a project before April 1st, it, it counts. <laughs> that's right. This is a super easy make along. We are the yep. chillest chill, chill. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Okay, and and yeah, and I apologize too because I meant to say something to you today too about the about the smash that stash chatter, and I totally forgot because Advent chatter. Kelly, Kelly does the draws from Ravelry because she's got the slide set up, and it's I I know that I've tried to do that before, and I'm like adjusting this and that, and so we both we both dropped the ball and totally forgot, but we apologize, yeah. and that'll be a surprise for next week. Yeah, so that's the reason to come back next week. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you might so, have won a prize. Yes, that's right. And we should so. mention too that <clears throat> for all of our make-alongs, we announce all of our prizes here on yeah. these podcasts, on these weekly podcasts. Um, we don't uh, go back in and uh, announce them on Ravelry. So if you have entered uh, one of our make-alongs, this is where you need to tune in to find out. Okay. Okay. Now we'll talk about what we're wearing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. Do you want to go first? I I hope I'm qualified to do so. But yes, um, okay. I am. Oh, I'm wearing two things. I want to talk about this one first because we'll start from the top and work down. This is okay. actually well, that's the. Not what I want. Oh, you Sorry. still have the. I didn't make banners. Sorry. I, no, I, you I, I was in, in the wrong thing. Go ahead. I didn't make a banner. Oh, okay. This <laughs> is the distance scarf. Is yes. it? Yes, yes, by Olga Putano. And uh, I know that it was knit using uh, one skein of Atenya yarn, which is not a mohair. It looks and feels like a mohair, but it is um, alpaca, is it not? I think it's cotton alpaca. It's got some cashmere in it. Silk. I can't remember. I know it's that there's a, absolutely a little, it luscious. Feels nice. <laughs> it feels so, so nice. And did I knit this? No, I did not. I just want to point out that you may have recognized this because Noelle knit this one and then she gifted it to me for my birthday. I am a lucky duck. I'm telling you, I love it. And I had to wear it today and I could not love it more. I really well, like it around my neck, but I'm telling you, it just held back the hair really good today too. So, okay. I might have to make another one. I think she took pity on me because she said that it is a really lovely pattern, but it did take, well, under Noel's yeah, well, standards, it took her don't. a while to knit. And maybe I thought it would be fiddly. I don't know. But, but there's nothing, there's no greater gift than having a knitter knit something for a knitter. Let me just tell you that. Like when somebody takes time to knit something for you, even when you knit yourself, it's just like an extra special little treat. It's like um, if you are the cook in your house and then your husband treats you to a cooked meal one night. Yeah. 
wine does not. We know that. But if your husband cooks you a meal, it just feels extra special that somebody does something for you that you normally do. So I yeah. was thrilled, like very well, excited yeah, to take Jacqueline it out of the bag. And Jacqueline and Rachel have both knit me socks. And that's just like, you know, like I knit socks and give them to everybody else. But it's so nice to have someone knit socks for you and just give them to you. Yes, so. absolutely. Anyway. And then... Okay. Um, I'm just thinking I, uh, boy, I totally dropped the ball because I didn't, I thought I had a picture in here yeah. of my vest, but anyway, I don't. Is that your, that's the, the it's right? the Werner vest. <laughs> okay. I think I have a banner from last week. Oh, that's not your vest. I thought, nope. yeah, I thought that was your vest. It's not. Okay. No, no. So this is the Werner vest by Vitra Design. And, uh, I knit this one holding, mohair and one strand of coast. Yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> I modified the pattern quite a bit. Um, it was meant to be a very cropped, very fitted vest. But the things that I really liked about the vest was this very narrow um, shoulder. And I like that profile. But I didn't want that the rest of the vest in that profile. I wanted the V-neck and it's got a nice V too. I really like that. So I decided to change things up and I knit it uh, as a looser vest. And then I also added, you can see here, I did a lacy um, panel down the side of the vest as well. And I did a split hem. I talked about this in detail when I finished it um, a couple of weeks ago. So if you want details, I do have them posted in Ravelry. And I think I wrote down all of my modifications in there as well. And but I do talk about this in detail a couple of episodes back. So you could go back there if uh, there was anything more that you wanted to to know about. Yeah, the vest. It looks great. And the, the color with the two yarns together is. Amazing. I was really happy with it. So it was yeah. um, Coast is um, River. And then I think it's the Marine Blue by Drops. Uh, okay. It's silk mohair and it just, it, it weighs nothing. And I love it as a layering piece. Um, I've worn it a couple of times already with a few different things. And uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm really enjoying the vest. I like the vest. I know they're good. Okay. And you? Okay. So I'll start from the top down. <laughs> so this is the lightweight hipster by Hohi Locatelli. So this was, when did I do this? This is done with Shirley Bryan Deconstructed Fade. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I've yes. been looking at it, wondering what you used. Yes. Yes. And this is, um, I think the color was called 9 to 5. I'm pretty sure it was called 9 to 5. Um, so here's a picture kind of of how it fades. So what I did, the the um, deconstructed fade comes in two separate skeins, like 50 gram skeins, because it's intended for knitting socks that fade the whole way through. So what I did, I took each of the um, the skeins and started at the same spot, and then I just alternated, right? So one row of yellow and then one row of yellow from the other. And then so that would go back and forth and use on my yellows. And then it would blend into the other colors, giving a longer stripe sequence using them um, both at the same time. So then you get this really nice fade in the, the shawl. Mm -hmm, so that's mm -hmm. just, and it just took one skein. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And I've done a couple of the hipsters. I really like this. It's such a wearable, easy, Yes, scarf. very nice. Um, and very well written. Hohe's patterns are always very well written. And it's just got the little tiny bit of fringe. And yeah, so I really, really enjoyed making that. And then the sweater that I'm wearing is the Air Sweater by Amy Miller. So here's a picture of that. I'm going to go in and get the banner. I'll grab it. You keep talking. Okay, so this sweater, it's this is done in Holstgarn Coast, and it's single, just a single strand of Holstgarn Coast. This color is called cocoa, but it's kind of like a, a brownie purple. And the pattern is completely plain on the front and the arms, and then the back is all lace. And this was such a fun pattern to knit, but it took me forever to do it because I it's knit. You do the back and the front, then you've got a seam, which I don't like doing, but you have to seam. And then you pick up and then you do kind of like a, a sleeve shaping. But once you picked up on the armbands and then knit down. So the coast on 
I did it on, I believe on a 3.25 millimeter needle, which means you're knitting the coast at like a 26 stitch gauge. So when you get to the stocking stitch of the front and the sleeves, it seems like it takes forever, but I really enjoyed doing the lace. The lace is what really made me want to do the pattern, but mm -hmm. this is such a nice weight to wear. Like, so this is the coast is 45% cotton and 55% lamb's wool. And it is, it's just a beautiful yarn to wear. The feeling on your skin is really nice. And um, this color and the lace is kind panel. of like a nice basic <clears throat> neutral. That lace panel is a nice vent if you do overheat. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's so really it, it was a fun knit. It, I mean, when you use the coast, the coast has got like 350 meters in a 50 gram cake. Mm -hmm. So like a little goes a long way. And then it's nice with this, um, just the plane to put a scarf and then you can really see the, the accent of the scarf. So yes. Okay, so that's what that's what we're wearing. Hi, Rebecca, it's good to see you too. So, uh, okay. Before we go on to the next thing, uh, Marsha asked, is double dipping allowed? Yes, yes. Marsha. I can't wink. Triple I was trying dipping. to wink asking for a friend. Dip. Yes. <laughs> Tell your friend you can you can uh, double dip. Yes. <laughs> so absolutely. All of our make alongs always double dip, triple yep. dip, dip away. Yep. Okay. So do you have any finished objects? Yes, I do. I have one. Okay. I have How many five. do you have? <laughs> Again? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell Ross to unplug you one day, just for a couple of days. <laughs> so, okay. So did you want me to start? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. Well, some of them, because I was, I'm knitting, I knit the little socks for the kids, right? So I was showing the feet teeth socks. So I think last week I had three pairs done. I had, I had Zoe's done. I had Isla's done and I had Declan's done. So I still had to do, I still had to do Molly's, Penelope's and Mackenzie's. So um, let's see here. First of all, let me show you. Well, first of all, the girls absolutely loved their socks. So here was the three older girls were together on the weekend and they had to get their socks on. This is just a picture of their feet. We could not get them to sit still to take a good picture of all three of them together. But they That's absolutely super loved cute, that socks. picture. And uh, Isla and Molly wore those to school today. And I had a text from Rachel saying, can you knit a pair for all the JKs and the SKs at their school? <laughs> like, ha ha. No. No. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> It was so nice that they liked them. So that's them all together. Now, Molly's ones I didn't have done. So these ones are Molly's. So again, these are the feet teeth socks. These are by Summerly Designs. So Molly's are actually done in um, the, the neon green is that Grundle hot socks. Mm -hmm. And then in between that, the kind of like the variegated green was Lolo did its um, hippo for St. Patty's Day. Very and nice. that was that was leftover that I had from a pair of socks that I did probably years ago. So honestly, their feet are getting so big, like soon their socks are going to be the same size as mine. I yes. swear. So that was the okay, so that was the first pair that I did this week. And then I had to do uh Mackenzie's and I had to do uh Penelope's. So Penelope's favorite color is yellow. <laughs> so here's hers. So they are, these are done with the Leo and Roxy. This is the 80-20 sock. And this is in a, uh, they had a set that had six little minis in it that were all really bright and neon colors. And I think it was called Tequila Sunrise. So hers are the yellow and the orange. And hers are actually the 48 stitch sock that's in the pattern. Some of the other sizes I had to adjust because there kind of wasn't a size that was appropriate for them. So they're really they're cute. So they cute. just have a heel flap and a gusset. So on hers, I did it a little different. I did the cuff in the yellow, but I did the heel in the orange. And those are... They look ready. like candy but corn. We haven't seen them yet. Yeah, they do. And then Mackenzie is just a couple of weeks old. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so hers are... I had to size down. So hers are these little... And these Adorable. are done with... Again, I 
that coral is the grundle socks and the neon coral, but then the little, the variegated yarn in between is leftovers from lichen and lace 80-20 sock and the color was pressed flowers. So it is an amazing way to use up little bits and odds and pieces of socks. Do you I know just, roughly how many grams you're using in those socks? Um, it's all on my, I, it is all on my, uh, not, not, I think like the, I think like the older girl socks, they're taking about probably 30 to 35 grams because they're getting quite a bit bigger in size. But these little ones are probably like total, maybe 20 grams. And so then cute. Penelope's so might cute. be like 25. So, but like, I mean, the thing is like, you can switch up colors, even if you run out, then just do a different color stripe. Like the kids aren't going to care. All they want is the, all they want is the eyes and the shark teeth, right? That's right. So, yes. So those are the socks. So they're all done. Do you know how many stitches you cast on for the newborn? For the newborn, I cast on 36. Okay. 36 for Declan's, I did 40 because he's, he's almost two months. For Penelope's, I did 48. And for all the other girls, I did 52. So. Good. They're so cute. So cute. They're, they're, they're actually fun to make. You know what? Striped socks, even if you're carrying the colors, are really fun. Because you just want to go, okay, I'll just do the next stripe. It's just like when you're knitting self-striping sock yarn, right? Yes, you can't you put them down. Get to the next stripe. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I have just one finish, so I'll jump in here. I finished okay. my Lento sweater. And I'm pretty okay. sure I have a... I'll get okay. In. Okay. So this is my Lento sweater. All done. It's gorgeous. Found off and worn. Oh, I wore it yesterday. Yay. And uh, let me just I'll switch get over here. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it looks so. Great. We went out to the park in Wilkesport yesterday to try to get some pictures. Oh, I should have put this other picture in because we found an, a nest with goose eggs. And I came walking oh. over that exact bridge and there was a goose there. And then all of a sudden she was sitting on the nest. She got very loud. She got off the nest and I'm like, okay, we won't stay here. We'll go elsewhere <laughs> in the park. And she just, as we're walking away, she's just honking like mad at us, like so upset. Anyway, what can I say about the sweater? I love it. It is the, it is a great, um, it's a really lightweight sweater. Um, and I knit this using uh, Super Soft and Lucia, both from Holst. And then I did a Marl. So um, this is Slate and Anthracite held together. And then I Marled in uh, the Mistral and the Anthracite. And then down here is uh, the blue is Mistral and Iced. And then uh, back down to the okay. slate again. So um, the one, th so I, I went down a needle size uh, because this was knitting a little bit big. So I knit this on a five as opposed to a six that the pattern calls for. Okay. And then I did the uh, cuffs in the neck using a four. I did the, the bind off on the hem in a four and a half. Um, I was worried that the, the, the bind off was going to sort of flare out if I stayed at the same needle size because this is a pretty loose gauge. This is mm -hmm. ultimately though, such a soft sweater with those two yarns held together. So again, this Lucia yarn uh, that we're talking about is a new offering from Holst and it is 42% uh, baby alpaca, 35% mulberry silk and 13% merino and then 10% yak and the yak you can really see it um, in this color because yak has a brown undertone yeah. and you'll really get uh, I don't know how well it's showing up on there but I can really see it in my sweater it's got just that little bit of a brown undertone that I love but uh, so if you struggle with wearing mohair because mohair is not for everybody some people it, it's sort of a skin irritant this one you may do better with um, this is just absolutely soft 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 against your skin noelle's already done a sweater in this yep. um, it's gorgeous and, and what's nice about it too is if if a lot of patterns you can substitute like a surrey for um, a mohair but a lot of the surrey blends are like the alpaca and the silk 
but a lot of them only have like 328 yards in a, in a 50 gram skein. This is 25 grams and you're getting 200, is it 200 meters or 200 yards? Mm. 200, uh, yeah, 200 meters. Okay, so you're getting basically the same as what you would get as if you were using a mohair. So yeah. so basically you can switch it out. Like if it calls for mohair, you can switch it out and not have to worry about the yardage difference. And then I think it might be just a little bit finer than the than the Surrey blends that are just the Surrey and the silk. Mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, and it doesn't, it doesn't, when you're knitting with it, you don't get the fluff all over the place. Like There's no fluff. It doesn't no, shed. No, it doesn't shed at all. So it's really, I mean, everything about it is fantastic to work mm. with. And even though I used the super soft, which we have talked about again and again, about how it's, we all feel like it's not really been named appropriately because it's far from being super soft. But yeah. when you, um, I soaked this and I let this soak for quite a while, to be honest, it, it sat in the sink and I went off to do something else. And an hour later, I remembered it was in there. I'm like, Ugh. So I went and I just squeezed it all out. Um, I used to spin things out in my washing machine and then I got a new washer and I'm terrified it spins so fast. So I don't do that anymore. But somebody did ask me on the weekend how I squeeze it out. And I have, um, uh, so I just kind of like when I'm pulling, when I drain the water out of the sink, I just kind of press down on it and let this, uh, the weight of my hands sort of squeeze it out. But what I did with this one, because I was impatient as I always am, and I really wanted to get it done fast. I have a large garment bag uh, that I uh, use in my washing machine when I, for washing sweaters that can be washed, not hand knits. And um, so I just dumped this wet garment into that bag and then I sort of squeezed it down tight. So that way there was no, um, pushing or pulling on the garment. And I just kind of squeezed it tight. Like it looked like a big cheesecloth ball. And then I just kind of kept twisting it and squeezing it out. And that way I was able to get a lot more of the water out than I normally can. And then I laid it out in the towel, rolled the towel up, and then I just kind of step across the towel. Yeah. So by the time I laid this out on the blocking boards, <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of moisture. And I have it laid out in the, uh, in the spare bedroom underneath the ceiling fan. And I did this late in the day and it was completely dry by the next morning so that was really good to know too yeah. but i'm happy with this this was my first sort of nice. um like color blocked garment i i don't have anything like that in my wardrobe that's not normally something that calls to me but uh, this one the yarn just sort of told me what it wanted to be and i'm really happy with it really happy yeah it looks good i know i want to i want to knit more with that that yarn but it's just now I want to knit summer stuff. Now I'm into summer stuff. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So my next finish is, yay. <laughs> yay. My next pair of Lord of the Rings socks. So you see the pattern there. This is the Samwise socks by Claire Ellen. And this is done in the Barocco vintage sock. Uh, let me see. Um, this is the color Black Cherry. It's got a number two, but it does have a color name. So this is an adult one for one of the guys, one of the males. So it's got um, like a tree pattern. It's hard to see it, but you can see it there. The tree pattern going up the front, and then it's got like an XO cable that goes all the way back down the back, and it goes all the way into the heel of the sock. And then you've got going down the sides, you've got this really neat, neat like moss stitch panel that's outlined by some twisted stitches. It looks so, so good. And you're on track. You're on track. I'm you got it done track. by the end of the month. So they are done. So And now you get to do a woman's pair, right? No, but I I do, but I'm I'm not. I'm, I did oh. start as another guy's pair. I thought okay. I should while I'm on a roll and the sock mojo is good, I should get this the guys. One okay, done. okay, okay. But anyways, <laughs> happy that those are done. And then my last FO is my um uh Tolsta tea. So Tolsta Tea. got it finished. I Very good. Finished. So this is the Tolsta Tea by Rebecca Klo. Mm -hmm. And I love it. It's done in, these are new yarns that were just put out by the Knitting Loft. So the main color, the coral color is their Cardi. So it is the Knitting Loft Cardi. It is 50% Merino, 50% hemp. It is 238 meters or 260 yards. So it's a DK weight and the gauge is 20 to 24 stitches. So this is actually 20 stitches. It's done on a size, for me, a size 4.5 millimeter needle. 
the contrast yarn, the stripe is the Knitting Lost New Yarn called Twinkle. And it is a, so I don't have the band for it, but it's, it's a light Aran and it's got like a strand of like a, a, a silky yarn going through it. And then it's got, I know, I don't know if you can see it, probably can't see the twinkle, but it's got. You can, a, certain ways that you turn it, the sparkle is lighting up. It's really nice. Tiny, like really, really tiny little payette sequence in it. And I, I love the yarn. I love this pattern. It's just like, it's such a great pattern. It's just basically the sleeves come to about here on my arms. And I can definitely see making more of these. It was super fun to make. Uh, yeah, I just, and I can't wait till the weather's a, a little bit warmer so that we can wear uh, short sleeve sweaters. So I love the striping and you can kind of put the striping in any way you want. I was going to say, did the pattern show it that way? I thought the stripes were all the way up. So that was a design choice you made, right? To start your stripes yeah, but, but when you I buy like the that. pattern, she's also got like a PDF that comes with it of sweater modifications and she shows kind of different things that other people have done. And there was one where the stripes did start here, but they didn't have this little bit of trim around the neck or around here. So it's kind of a pattern that you can kind of put your own spin yeah. on it, like what you want to do. So I didn't think I'd have enough yarn to do the whole sweater just in the plain color. So I thought, well, I'll put the stripes in, but I don't know. I kind of like the, I kind of like, really like the, it. the plain up here and then the stripes starting down. So well, the tonal, the tonal is so gorgeous that those two yarns were meant to be knit together. Truly they were, they look really beautiful. They, I together. really like them together. So the, this color was Coral Crush and then the color in the twinkle was called Diamond Dust. Very nice. So very nice. Anyway. Real, and they have gorgeous colors in the yarn. So there's another, another, I'm going to cast on something with this one this oh, week. And this, they're all this so color is called rhubarb. So I want to do some kind of a cardigan, like a summer cardigan with this, because I think it would be great to put on over like um, just an ivory colored tank or a white tank or over even just like a little black sundress or. Very nice. So, yeah. yeah so that's my, that's all of my, all of my finished objects. So, well, that's pretty good okay. for a week. Pretty good. <laughs> so, um, oh no, there was a shoot. I, oh, Christine is asking, and I don't remember the name where you get your leather tags from. Uh, your I know this starts with a B. My head. Brick bubble, brick bubble. I will add that again to the show notes. Okay. Okay. So, do you have any whips? I do. Um, I have two. I have two. Two. Well, two, one's almost a whip. <laughs> almost a whip? Yeah. Okay, do tell. It's all decided. I'm curious now. Well, no, well, I'm going to save that one for last because that's when I have to show that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I've been working on socks for my husband, his first socks. Well, I mean, I did the bear paw socks, but they... They're thicker socks, so we're not really calling those like everyday socks. So I did the socks for him and I finished the first sock. So this is the, I'm calling them Kawasaki cables. <laughs> the colorway is based, it's called motocross. Uh, Kawasaki is the bike that he, his bike of choice that he rides. And um, then I just interjected a nice big cable in there and did a shadow wrap heel. They fit him really good. It's a, a 72 stitch sock. So I didn't so much enjoy that, but I mean, you've knit lots of them. <laughs> yep. And uh, as you saw earlier, I have cast the second one on. So because what I was worried is that, you know, when I got through that, I would get pulled away to something else and I would never go back, but I'm, it looks good. It does look good. It He's really happy good. with it. It does. It looks really good. This yeah. was a, it's one of those kind of tricky yarns is like, what do you do with something that's so highly variegated? But honestly, like that doesn't bother me at all. I think it's, and you know, even from a distance, it just, it looks good enough that the, uh, that the cable still shows up. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. And he was happy too. So I hope he wears them because if he doesn't wear them, I won't knit him another pair. That's that. But uh, anyway, he said he was quite happy with that. So there we go. That was number one. Do you okay. want to show one? Yeah. So because I finished my one pair of socks, I had to get the next pair of socks on the go for the um, my Lord of the Rings theme. So these ones are going to be the Gandalf socks. And again, this is by 
Claire Ellen, and I do have a picture of what they look like. So there's what that one looks like. So it's kind of um, like all over cables that go down the front of the sock and they go down the back of the sock. So you've got it like it's kind of like a, a cross cable, but it's moving out and in. So these are for um, my son and I have started them. That's all I've got so far. Again, I'm using the Barocco Vintage sock. This is the color Smoke. Okay, so these socks, because of all the cabling in them and the way the cables go, you can't do just 72 stitches. So her normal patterns come in 64 stitches and 72 stitches. This one is 80 stitches. 84? Oh, 80. Okay, 80, I was going to say 84. 88. 88. 88 stitches. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so anyway, so it's going to be, but this is, this is an 88 stitch cuff and the cuff is kind of all different rib. Like it's not, but it's kind of neat, right? Like it's not just knit to purl to. So anyways, and then I finished that and then it didn't go right into the, the pattern. Like the things didn't go smoothly in and I don't like that. So I did a row of uh, a purl ridge just so it would kind of separate it out. So anyway, so I just started those. So we'll get into the get into the um, cabling of it this week. So yeah, 88 stitches. So <laughs> the cup's done. We'll see how far we get. But anyway, that is the next pair. So I think that'll be the that'll be the biggest challenge because I'm pretty sure none of the other ones are going to be 88 stitches. And That's if they are, I might choose if they are, I might choose a different pattern. A different pattern for sure. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh Okay, so I have one other that I've been working on, and I've been kind of working on this one quite a bit in the last couple of days, just because I'm really enjoying the knit. And I will address a question that just popped in here. Okay. Um, Odd Dawn said that it would make her feel better if we shared some of our frogged moments because she's struggling. She said her measuring skills she feels are lacking. Uh, I will say this, if, okay, and this is just a me thing because this is my personality. Typically, if I frog something, I won't start it again. Yeah. That That's not a good trait. I should push through and figure out what I did wrong and do it over. But I have been like that with a lot of things. Like if I'm sewing a garment and it doesn't work out, it's gone. It doesn't get made again. That's, that's not a great trait. So I can't really help you out too much. But the other thing that I will address is that sometimes if I'm knitting something and it's not working out to plan, before I frog it, I'll work really hard at trying to find out how I can alter it without frogging it. And <clears throat> I will show you that in this next project that I've cast on. So bear with me until I get to that point. So I cast on the, um, this is a test knit for Beth McDonald Stone. It is the mid ocean tea. I am not going to have my test knit done in time, but uh, she knew that when I cast it on for her. So this is the front. This is so beautiful though. This is, um, this is just beautiful. Yeah, Noelle has so already good. knit this sweater yeah. and it is such, okay, I'll show it this way. Cause I can show you the lace better. If I, I've put the back of it onto a cord so I can show the lace. Yeah. Look it's at that. Gorgeous. So it's just this beautiful all over diamond pattern, mm -hmm. although the sleeves are not. The sleeves are a plain stockinette. So it's lace. It's it's a lot of lace, like this lace here, a little bit of yarn overs to create the raglan. And then it's just this repeating diamonds and they increase as you go down the sweater. Um, well, I guess until you get underneath the arm and then they're yeah. going to go straight down from that yeah. point. Um, I'm knitting this one in uh, two different shades. Uh, this is the Coast thistle down and mm -hmm. we've talked about the coast it's 45 55 uh cotton and lambs wool yeah, cotton and, lamb's and wool. then the holding it with titty caca in lupine in um and this is 100 percent baby alpaca so they are slightly different shades this one i would say is a little bit more blue this one a little bit more purple what it gives me is this really you can see it a little bit more in the stockinette you can see that little bit of a blue undertone yeah, it's gorgeous. And I'm really happy with this one. Really happy. Now, to get back to the mistake, it wasn't really a mistake. Um, it's just, I don't know why. I, I adjusted my needle size to get the proper gauge. And then I cast on using the um, alternating cable cast on, which we've been using. Mm -hmm. And for some strange reason, 
this turned out looking really loose and I don't know why it it's just really loose it feels stretched out I'm not 100% happy with it but I didn't want to take it out because it was twisted rib and for some strange reason I don't know why I did this it was supposed to be an inch and a quarter but I did an inch and three quarters I don't even know why I did that so I wasn't paying attention here's what I think I'm going to do because it's so long I've actually got a little bit of playroom here to do this I think this is what I'm going to do to make the sweater work I'll show you I'm just going to tack that down and then look mm -hmm. this will be my neckline so I think that will be a better look for me I think it will be a better fit for me and that's just kind of one of the things that I was talking about. So sometimes even if I do make a mistake before I give up on it, I'm going to work my hardest. Um, one of the things that I was thinking about, and I had seen this tip as well, uh, Sophie from Cozy Meadow Knits was talking about how she buys elastic thread yep. and some of her neckline, she feels that just don't hug in enough. She runs that elastic thread through the neck to tighten them up a little bit. But then when I realized I had knit it quite a bit longer than I should have knit it, that was no longer an option for me. So I just got playing around and um, thinking what else I could do with it to make the sweater work before I would take it out. So I guess the point of me saying all of that is like, don't, don't get down on yourself. Don't be no. frustrated. My goodness, we all make mistakes and, uh, or we just make something and we do everything right, but it still just isn't exactly what we want. And that's part and parcel of the experience. But before you get too frustrated with yourself and tear anything apart, see if there's anything you can do first by, you know, tightening it. I have done things like with um, a cardigan that felt too loose in the neckline. I've put like a stabilizing crochet band in there to tighten in that neckline. I have tried shrinking things if I knit them too big. Yep. Sometimes sweaters just come out too big. Uh, sometimes they come out too small. Then I will go back and see if I can aggressively block it a little bit better. If I can't block it, I will find a smaller person and they're going to get a lovely sweater. Um, that's just sort of my process. Don't look at them as failures. Just look at them as these are how I... Look what I did to overcome this obstacle and feel and good about your nets. Don't necessarily make the decision right there and then. Like sometimes mm -hmm. if you set that project away for a bit, um, it put it puts some distance between it and you're not so emotionally attached to it. And in the meantime, you might see something on a podcast or you might hear something or you might learn something yes. that will help you adjust that, whatever that particular thing is, adjust it so that it does fit. So like, like, and, and I often find too, if I do have to rip it out, if I've set it aside for a while and I come to the realization that yes, there is, there is no other choice, then if I've set it aside for a while, I'm not as in the zone of thinking, oh, look how much time I spent in this. And I find yes. it easier to undo it at that point if I do finally figure out that I do have to undo it. Um, I mean, I don't even like ripping back, but I do rip back if if I have mm -hmm. to. And because I don't swatch very often, I have to start a project with that in mind that if it doesn't doesn't work out to the size I want, I am going to have to go back in. Yes, and, absolutely. You know, rip back. And that first pair of socks that I did this year, the Lord of the Rings socks that I did for Ross, I don't know how many times I ripped those things back because I did something <laughs> wrong or I knew they were going to be too tight or I started it on a wrong needle or something. So you know, like it's, it's, it happens. But part of knitting is ripping back and fixing. So, um, you know, I don't think there's anybody out there that gets everything perfectly right every time the first time. Absolutely so not. No, don't, absolutely you have to look not. at also when you do that and you do have to rip something out, you've learned something in the process, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be what you need to do when you're working with that yarn in order to get a different gauge or, you know, but even when you do a sweater, because I mean, we all have sweaters that we don't wear as much. You learn what styles you like to wear on your yes. body or what suits your body. Mm -hmm. But from every mistake, you're still learning. So yeah, absolutely. And if you do reach a decision where you have to frog something, save it for a knit day when you're with friends and let your friend yeah. rip it out for yeah. you. Yeah. It hurts so much less so. when somebody else is doing it. And at the yeah. end of the day, too, you know, like you still have your yarn, you still have the pattern. So I guess what you've had, you've lost is your time, but yep. you haven't lost any fabric or material. I mean, when I sew something, if it doesn't work out, I probably can't go in and fix that and adjust it too much more from the pattern. I may lose that fabric, but with knitting, yeah. the nice thing is you can take it out and start over yeah. again. So anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, please don't feel defeated. We, we, are, we are by no means um, <laughs> any yeah, level I'm of perfection here. 
we, Carolyn, we have Carolyn to do things over. Has just said here, use lifelines. So if, especially yeah. if you're doing something in lace or something, which is a lot harder to rip back to, if you put lifelines in every so often, if you do have to go back, you only have to go back to where that lifeline is. Now, having said that, the only time I've ever needed a lifeline was when I didn't put one in. <laughs> the times I put them in, I never needed them. <laughs> the one time I could have used that, I hadn't put them in. So yeah. anyway, so, okay. So my last whip, which is not a whip yet, but colors and yarn are picked. So I am doing another test for Beth McDonald. It is her Vermic basic, but this time it is the 28 stitch one. So mm -hmm. I am going to do it in coast, but nice. I am going to do it striped. So I took out all my coast yarn and looked at what colors I was going to use. So here are. <laughs> I love it already. I love it. So those are the colors wow. that I'm going to use. Very them. nice. So now in the meantime, I found, I was looking just online. I was trying to find these little um, stripe sequence, like generate, not generator, or even anything about stripe sequence. Mm -hmm. So what I found, and I'm going to bring in another screen here, and then I'm going to show you. Okay. So this little... Um, website is called randomstripes.com. So when you go in here, you can see all of these colors and you can actually go in and you can pick out colors that are close to the colors that you have. So I'll just do that here. I've got um, the stone, which looks like my main color, um, up in the colors of the, uh, the blues. Let's see, in the blue, I think I picked out the this sherbet color. For my kind of greeny yellow, I picked out this pistachio color. Um, for my pink, I think was I was more into this uh, grape color. And then the orange, I was kind of into this Jaffa color. So what it does, it brings up those colors. So you can generate a stripe sequence, okay? So you can go down oh, and you wow. can put in... You can put in, do you want your stripes to be two rows, three rows, four rows? So I don't want any one row stripes. They're too little. So I'm going to take the one out. I'm going to put in two. This is just to show I'm going to put two. I want my stripes to either be two stripes, four stripes, five stripes, or six stripes. Okay. Then there's a choice here. You can use the colors in the order that you've got them up here. So I could do this and then generate. And then you'll see up here, or sorry, here. And you can see it generates a stripe pattern for you. So that isn't put that something order. But if I want to just do random stripes, I can hit random stripes. And then I can go in, hit this generate stripes, and it'll generate I can keep going through till I find a stripe sequence that I like. Wow, with all the colors and then down at the bottom, it tells you okay, so in this case, there was six rows of the Jaffa, there was uh, two rows of the sherbet, there was five rows of the grape, and then you can use that for your site stripe sequence. So you can just keep going through and putting in till you find a color sequence that you like. So I thought that was very so clever. Cool. That so, is super cool. And you're going to link that, right? Because I, I need that link, link that. too. Okay. Yes. So I think that was so cool. And you can kind of pick out colors that match the colors that you've got to work with. And yeah, I thought that was that was amazing. So then you can kind of at least get a little bit of an idea of what it's going to look like. And I think it's going to be perfect for just a basic sweater to go in and put all those stripes in. This will be like the perfect kind of like spring or like a cool evening in the summer sweater because it's just going to be the coast held single. I think I'm probably going to have to knit it on a three millimeter needle for the 28 stitch gauge. But yes. But that's not due till the middle of May. And my son's not getting his sweater for this birthday. I'm getting him something. <laughs> get it for next birthday, maybe. He's still going to get his sweater, but probably not till September. He won't be wearing it before then anyway. But yeah, I thought that was such a cool little That tool. is amazing. That is really amazing. So I am then you could just take a, a screenshot of kind of like what your stripe sequence is. And then you can have you can have it out there in front of you to put your stripes in. So I thought that that was, I thought that was cool. <laughs> So Very cool. all these things that you can find that when you don't even know that you're looking for something. No, no, they just, yeah. So. You go down a rabbit hole and you don't know where you're going to end up. Yeah. But that's really clever. I like yep. that. Yeah. Because so. that's sort of, that's definitely something that I struggle with. I think, okay, well, I know that I like these colors, but how many, 
how many stripes do I want or how many rows do I want them to be? Yep. And this takes all the guesswork out. Yeah. Yep. And, and nice. by the number of rows that you can come up with, because once you finish like the sequence you've got once, you can go just go back up and repeat it. Right. Or yeah. Or you can put in enough, enough, uh, like thicknesses of stripes. Like I'm not even sure I might even do the stripes thicker than that. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to play with that till I find something that I like in the colors. So mm -hmm. nice. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So did you buy anything? <laughs> I did not. No, I, I did not. I didn't either. Oh, you didn't buy or it didn't show up? Well, nothing showed up yet. <laughs> <laughs> so. anyway, oh, dear. I, um, I have enough things that I have to get working on. So I got to get that on the needles because that's going to be a slower knit because of it being such a. Yes. Such a. Uh, small stitch gauge but yes yes yeah. and i'm and janice i want to do another tulsa tea that's right you could use that stripe generator to do a tulsa tea that would be really cool too yeah so you actually know that really cool with the tulsa was do your plain multi-stripes yeah but put do plain up here then do the multi-stripes and then embroider little flowers up here in the color of your stripes that would be good that would so. be really good yes very nice um okay so All right. No, I was just reading. Okay. okay. I think, I think we're good. There were uh, still a couple of little questions in here. Um, Kelly was asking <clears throat> Noel, since you are the, the uh, rule person. Oh yes, you can. Yes. Can, can you spin fiber in the yes. smash that stash? Yes. Yep. She has pre 2015 fiber. Yes. You can spin it. Yes. Very good. Okay. So. And what else did we have? There was something else in here too. Oh, Louise was wondering about the Chicago meetup information. We're going to put the link below yeah. where you can reach out to Penny and on Penny's Ravelry page, PJ Knits. She, or actually, I think on Ravelry, she's PJ Knits one. And okay. she has all of her information in there. There's a group with links to the hotel and all of the details. So uh, you would be able to find that in there. And um, show notes, again, show notes are a day in coming, so they won't be directly under right away. Um, Jacqueline, my daughter, does them for me tomorrow, but I know that she's in, she's taking a pottery class right now that is also Wednesday nights after work, so she doesn't get Fun. them until after, it won't be up till about nine o'clock tomorrow night, so. Good, very good. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much about what we I have. We're, yeah. we're a little over schedule for time, but um I've got her names at the bottom too. This seemed to be um, pretty good last week when I mentioned this because I had a few people reach out and said, oh, I've been looking for you on Instagram. These names at the bottom of the page. Um, I'm the Tangled Stitch on Instagram. Noelle is at Noelle's Knits and Pieces. Mm -hmm. I am my most social self on Instagram. That's uh, where I do, I don't know, my more socially things. That's where I show things that I'm working on and show snippets of my things that I've got going on, works in progress, things like that. So if you uh, want to check that out, that would be great too. You can find me there. And, uh, oh, Irene mentioned everybody to give a thumbs up. That very kind, Irene. Thank you. So, okay. Do we have anything okay. else? I think we're pretty good. Yeah. So happy spring, everybody. I hope spring weather is here soon. And I guess for for people in the other hemisphere, you're into fall. Fall is my favorite season. <laughs> Absolutely. Does everybody, okay, this is a completely off knitting topic. There's a, a solar eclipse next Monday. Yes. Yes. And it's at a time where we should be able to see it if the sun is shining. And we are in the direct path for total coverage. Well, not quite the direct path. If I go to Chatham, I'm in the direct path. I've done a lot of research on this. I've got cameras ready. I've got a date with my husband. We have a place scouted out. Don't go to Niagara Falls on Monday. They are actually calling for an emergency there. They think so many people because it's in the direct path to see it as well. I don't remember the last time somebody may know when we actually had that during the day. I remember one when I was a young girl and I, I was remember in grade school. Yeah. So you, okay. You remember that too then. So like, yeah. I'm thinking how eerie it was when the yes, day turned dark. And I don't day. think we got full coverage at that point. I mean, we, I, in Sarnia, it's only 98.6 and it's going to be crazy wherever it's full. I'm not going wherever it's full. <laughs> Good luck to you if you're driving somewhere where it's full. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I think I have a quiet spot maybe that nobody else knows okay. about. Okay, I'm sure that there's a whole bunch of other people that have probably figured out that quiet spot. But <laughs> Kelly says they are traveling to the totality too. I know. Oh, schools are getting a PA day in Toronto. Okay, now this is really well, they exciting. Are here too. They are here too. Carrie says 54 years ago, we had a 70% eclipse in Sarnia. Okay. So okay, when I was a little girl, I was living I... in, no yeah, I was living in Nova Scotia when I was uh, a little girl. So Christina says maybe it was 1984. I don't know. But anyway, I'm, I'm ridiculously excited about this and uh, I am hoping to get some decent photos and uh, yeah. It's full in St. Thomas too. Oh, well, hmm. Could tie that up with some knitting. <laughs> we could go park well, under little red, underneath. Mitten is, little red mitten is not open on monday oh they're not open on mondays okay no. very good all so right i think london is like 99.5 or something percent but yeah I, like i said I, there, the places where it's full there's going to be so many people there i am like not there <laughs> i can't even imagine what niagara falls is going to be like no. i will not be there no. i'm telling you i will not be there Yes. So, so, okay. So that was the other thing. And then the other thing that I wanted to leave you with, because I'm completely, I am like, I've got like 6% to finish this book. Uh, I've been reading uh, the new book by Kristen Hannah. Her name, Kristen Hannah called the women. <laughs> and I am, I am all in on this book. Her character is her main character. There's like equal parts of strength and brokenness about this. And she is this, this is, this is it for me. Um, Chris and Hannah wrote a book called The Great Alone, and it sucked mm -hmm. me in like no other book. And I loved that book. And then this one, this def definitely tops it. And it's um, uh, talking about a character, and she was a nurse, uh, a combat nurse in the Vietnam War. And for so many years, it was said, oh, well, the women were never in Vietnam. And this book is just, this book is everything. It's so good. So if you have a chance to get your hands on one from the library, I know there's a long waiting list, but it's it's worthwhile. So, okay. Well, be safe, everybody, especially with that eclipse. Um, yes. And have an awesome week, have an amazing week. And we will see you back here next week. And thank you to everybody for joining us and for everybody that's joining in after um, you make our Tuesday nights. So you do. Yep. Take care, everybody and happy knitting. <laughs>